Good morning. I'm the Moon Mama. I'm very early this morning. Um, God, there's so much energy moving that I wanted to do my best to come and talk about it before my day got started, and I and I lost it. And so, um, so I'm here because I'm here this early just because, like I said, there's so much energy and so many shifts happening, and. It's really, it's a real significant time. So important right now. So today is a Venus day. Venus, good morning. Venus is the planet that governs our emotions. It governs our feelings. It governs how we relate um, to others. It, it's the ruling energy of how we relate to the external world. That's what I'll say, right? It's it's like your food and money and friendships and people and um, your relationship to the earth. And it's, it's, it's all of the things that um, really, I would say Venus is all of the things that make you an earthling <laughs> because it's about your feelings. Like, but it's not just like the moon is what you're feeling on the inside. Venus is what you're feeling on the outside, what your sensory body generates around you um, through your, you know, the taste and touch. And, and those sensibilities are very, very personal, right? And so we want to understand how our Venus, um, how our Venus relates. And it's so fascinating because as I have really been a detective in my own world to understand the things that attract me, the things that repel me, the things that make me feel safe, the things that make me feel insecure, all of this is a Venus exercise. Like, you know, it's so important for us to get to know ourselves because when you get to know yourself, then you, you know, you you can avoid things that need to be avoided. You can step into challenges that need to be taken. You can um, understand when you need to grow and when you need to um, contract, like you need to understand yourself. And Venus is the Venus and the moon and Mercury, but Venus is really understanding your relationship to the external world, right? So what kind of foods do you love? You, but, but more than what kind of foods do you love, why are you eating right now? Why, like, are you eating to, because you're hungry or are you eating because you're trying to distract yourself from something? All of that stuff is Venus. So also Venus is the day that I ask for donations. Reciprocity, Venus is what you give, you get back. And it's, you know, understanding the earth realm is, um, you know, the earth realm is cause and effect. That's Saturn. The earth realm is time and karma and discipline. You know, and what you put in, you're going to get back sooner or later. Like if you invest money and you let it sit there for a while and you just let it grow slowly. Remember one time my auntie was like, oh, I put $11,000 in this thing. And then I took it out 10 years later or something like that. And it was $33,000. And I remember, I remember it because she said, well, that's one good thing Ronald Reagan did, <laughs> but she was able to invest her money and it grows, right? So that's, that's a that's a Venus thing because it's money, but it's also a Saturn thing, but it's karma, but it's our relationship to the energy here. And and we we need to understand what motivates us, right? So I was saying that today is a day that I ask for donations and reciprocity. So if you want to donate to me, um, you can donate at my Cash App. If you get value from the work that I'm doing here, if what I share supports your growth and evolution and helps you move forward, if there is a if you are getting something, it is great for you to give something back because then the getting really becomes yours. Um, so you can say thank you, you can share what you benefit or how it supports and serves you, um, or you can give a cash app, which is dollar sign at dollar sign Monique Ruffin or um, at sign Monique hyphen Venmo. 
I appreciate whatever it is because it's an energy exchange. Ultimately, that's what it is. I give you energy, you give me energy. And because we honor the the cycle and the way it works, the way reciprocity works, then we benefit from it. Because my work for me, if it's not about anything, it's about evidence. One of the things that I'm so clear about right now on the planet is that we need spiritual teachers and leaders and people who are committed to the spiritual path to be able to show forth the evidence of their work. Otherwise, you know, when I grew up in Christianity, Christianity didn't work. <laughs> it didn't, like it would say, ask and it is given. I would ask and I wouldn't get anything, right? Because it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Because the the energy was um, given to Jesus Christ. So it wasn't really inside of you. It was ex- It was an external thing. So I, so to me, it is important that the work works. If the work is not working, then you should go somewhere else and learn and do because we are here to produce a new reality, <laughs> okay? The old reality is collapsing. We're here to produce a new reality. And in the new reality, we need evidence of our progress. We need evidence of our creations. We need to realize ourselves. We need to become self-realized and outgrow the immature, childish ways you know, that says, oh, Jesus is going to take care of it or, you know, everything is wrong because of the white man. I mean, and I understand all of these identities and ways of being, but they are collapsing because the Western world is coming undone. So what we're doing now is we're really stepping into a new way of being that requires that we be responsible and accountable for our own energy. And it is our energy that will allow us to build a new reality. So um, yesterday I had, Ricky Williams was, on, was he taught my class. Um, I'm teaching a class called Rebirthing the Authentic Self, Becoming Your Own God Image, Becoming Your Divine Self, like how to move into your own divinity. And um, the class is focused on really how to move subtly how to because the subtle energy is where the power really is and it's it's focused on how do we subtly embody these archetypical these archetypal um these archetypal energies through the understanding of astrology and ricky williams was there last night and when i tell you so he was my mentor for a while and i've studied with him Um, and he is such a fucking genius. Like, it's just madness how, how, how brilliant he is. And he was saying, um, we were talking about the third house and perception. And he was saying how important it is that we understand that perception is what we're taught in our homes, but then what we go out and actually see in the world and being able to see correctly. And how important that is at this time, right? As we are watching things in our government come undone, as we are witnessing things that were once really secure and safe, um, in some ways at least become more geared towards money and um, money and capitalism, right? So it's like you can't go to your doctor and doctors are writing prescriptions for opioids, you know what I mean? And then, and then there's no government, um, there's no government oversight. All of those things are done. So you've got to really learn how to trust yourself. <laughs> that is the point. You've got to learn how to come into your own power, how to come into your own authority, how to perceive reality for, to create your own safety, right? Um, And how do you do that at this time is by really creating a relationship with the invisible reality, with the ancestral realm, with with the unseen, right? Through your spirituality is how you're going to learn to navigate this reality now. Because 
the old system is no longer trustworthy. <laughs> it's, it's just not trustworthy any, anymore. I don't know. Like, I don't feel like it's ever been trustworthy for black women, honestly. Um, but it's absolutely not trustworthy for anyone anymore as we watch what the banks are doing or we watch what, um, you know, the doctors are doing or the pharmaceutical companies are doing. Like, it's important that we begin to really be able to navigate this reality under our own authority. And why is that? Because Pluto is moving through Capricorn. And so to move through this reality well, you're going to really have to be able to trust your own senses. And that is what Venus is. Venus is, you know, your sensory body. <laughs> it is your, you know, your spidey senses, your intuition. Well, the moon is your intuition, but Venus is how you feel, right? So, you know, when you meet somebody, your intuition is present, but you also have a sensory body that's like, huh, I feel like this person is this, or I feel like this person is that. Like I, and we have to learn to trust ourselves because those energies, you know, our sense, we've turned that stuff off to be in a community or be in a world where we made agreements to act like we didn't see things. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I'm so aware about with racism, I'm like, wow, white people made an agreement to act like they didn't see what was going on with black people in a lot of cases, right? Because that was the way to survive. You know, like, I'm, I don't tell these stories only to, um, to create blame or because blame is not really valuable, honestly. I tell these stories and understand these experiences in this country so that I can understand where what influenced people and what needs to be healed, right? So if you live in a culture where this is valuable and this is not, everyone's going to aspire to the thing that's valuable just because they want to survive. <laughs> it's normal, right? It's, it's really normal human behavior to want to survive and to do whatever you need to do in order to survive. And it's sad or heartbreaking or disturbing when your survival depends on other people's oppression and the things that humans will do to other people for their own survival is a very interesting thing, right? So now, when we understand that, then we can begin to do the work to forgive ourselves, to understand that we've been in a system that supported that sort of behavior, that even that more than supported it, um, celebrated it, even, right? Competition, the strongest, the fittest, all of that sort of stuff. But the world that we're coming into now, you can't survive that way any longer. So it's important to you know, really bring your senses back online. Am I making sense? I feel like I'm talking all around, the, all around. Um, but it's important to bring your senses on board again, to begin to trust yourself, to begin to understand why you think, why you think what you think and why you feel. And if you feel something, what is that? Why am I feeling that? Right. Um, to not ignore the things that you're feeling anymore. We've been taught to ignore it and act like, Act like we don't see people suffering. Act like we don't see that there's a huge prison system. Act like we don't see that people's jobs are being taken. We've been told to act like that's not, and, and our survival was based upon those, those agreements, those subconscious and unconscious agreements. Our survival was based upon it. So the human, human nature would do it, right? I really feel like if I was born in a white body, I would have done all the things that white people did. I really believe that I would have, right? I just happened to be born in this body and didn't have that, didn't have those things available to me. I'm born in a black woman's body and I was born in the, the frequency of poverty. So I've, I had a different perspective. But I believe that if I had access, 
I would have done the things that everyone else did to survive because I've still done the things that I need to do to survive, right? And what those things have been is for me to tell the truth about what's going on here and and help other people see how they're participating in the, you know, in the oppression of others and to continue to say, look at what we're doing, look at what we're doing, look at what we're doing and do it in a way that doesn't just make me a victim, but that, that really just speaks to the systemic experience of it. That has been the best tool that I could use for survival and to heal myself, to actually climb myself out of the experience, but without striving to become what the culture has, what the culture celebrates, to climb out of it enough to just be able to communicate about it, to be able to share the perception of it so that we can see what we're actually doing, right? So had I, I have been working with the tools that I have here. We've all done it in some way, but now we need to bring back online the aspects of ourselves that we cut off, right? So like one of the things like animals, animals are highly sensory, highly sensory perceptive. They can feel, yes, I understand. Um, they can feel storms coming. They can feel things in the earth and movements in the earth before humans ever even know it, right? But we have the ability to do those things too. And that is Venus. Oh, I just said a lot to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> that is Venus. It's also the moon, but it's Venus. It's your sensory body. You know, when you smell something, what is that? When you taste something, what goes off in your body? And it and it and then it becomes a story that lives inside of you. If you ever watched all the series of The Matrix, um, there is, oh gosh, I'm going to kill all the names and the characters because all I know is fucking Neo and Morpheus. But, um, and Trinity. But in like maybe the second episode, there is the Machiavellian guy. And he is, he, he's, he has to know everything and he, he owns everything and he has all the information. He's Mercury is what he is. And because Mercury goes to everything, Mercury is neutral and goes to the highest places and the lowest places and is the deliverer of information. And so they had to go see him the um the woman the oracle sent them to see him to get the key maker <laughs> and he was upset that they didn't know why they had come they were he was like somebody sent you guys here y'all don't even know why y'all are here and and then he shows that he sends this woman a piece of chocolate cake and he put a spell in the chocolate cake for the chocolate cake to arouse her sexually. And she took the cake and she doesn't know that it's from him, but she bites into it and you literally see all the senses in her body wake up. And you know, you see the fireworks go off in her body. That's Venus. That is Venus. You taste something and your body goes, mmm. And so she feels that and then she gets up and goes to the bathroom where he then follows her to the bathroom to have a sexual interlude with her because he set her up. And she didn't even know why. She didn't know why she was feeling what she was feeling, but it took her into an action that led him to get what he wanted. So it's important for us to begin to understand our own sensory body and why we feel what we feel and how it motivates us and how it moves us. And we're coming out of a time when we've been disconnected from all of that. When we have, you know, we, we've been, it's like you feel something and you just eat. Because it's like, like, so lately I've been going through all of these upgrades, these, in, these um, spiritual upgrades, and they've been so intense for me that all I want to do is eat like, and I want to eat like sugar. And yesterday I went and had pizza with a friend and a glass of wine because it's, because it's grounding me because the, what the stuff that I'm feeling in my body is so new. I don't really know how to be with the energy yet. So it's easy to just be with the senses of like the food cravings, but I'm aware of it. So I won't live here long, but I'm aware that that's what's happening to me. So your senses, 
Your senses matter. Your intuition matters. What you're feeling. And as we move into this new reality, it is going to be very, very important for us to understand and have dominion and mastery of our own system. What are your thoughts creating? What are your feelings creating? What, how are you generating your reality? Because you are the creator of your reality. So one of the things that I'm starting to see, uh, and I'm going to share every part of my experience. Um, So someone is asking to be here. So tell me why you want to be here. What do you want to talk about? Um, So I'm going to share every part of my experience as much as I can. So yesterday, so what I'm beginning to experience is having, having experiences out in the world that are absolutely identical to what it is I am creating in my sensory body and my mental body. Like... I am creating, I yesterday I had the experience of a complete projector out of my own consciousness because I have cleared the trauma and cleared the preferences and cleared the, and when I say cleared it, I mean identified it. I've really identified it and made peace with the energies. And so now I'm not as, um, I'm not as, I'm not out of control I'm not mentally out of control. I'm, I've loved, I've created a level of mastery. And so, and I've had to do things like really isolate myself, really, you know, monitor the people that I'm talking to on a regular basis so that I could re- easily begin to see my creations without having to, um, without having, without thinking that it's them out there. It's not them out there. It's me. Everything comes from within. All of this is an internal thing. So yesterday was the first time I was out or I was with some friends and I noticed it was exactly everything that was happening was exactly. Get down. (laughs) Get off the table. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, She knows she's not supposed to be on the table. Anyway, everything that happened yesterday was exactly as I had pictured it or felt it in my system before it happened to the almost to the T like it was almost like the people were reading my mind because that's all I can really say but I do know that that is how we get to create reality and what it requires is mastering yourself, mastering your trauma and recognizing that you are creating reality and understanding as the sun is in Scorpio, that desire is the energy that builds our reality, desire. And I remember there was a time when I was completely afraid of desire because I would never get what I actually desired. I would get the opposite. And so if that's something that's happening, you have to go and find what is the root of that. If you're not getting what you actually desire and you get, you're getting something other than that, you're creating that. So if you can take responsibility for it and be curious about it. That was the thing that Ricky said last night. Oh, it was so, so, so incredible. Curiosity. It's, curiosity is being in the unknown, like really taking the judgment off of it. Like a, like a child, one of the things like these cats that I see, they, will, they are so curious, they will climb into a deep dark hole without any, they, they don't think like nothing's gonna get them. They don't, like, they're just, they're completely innocent. And that is what we have to be willing to access, innocence, combined with curiosity so that you are willing to climb into the unknown to experience something that you don't know yet about yourself because the world that we live in has given us all of these rules and conditions and we think we know, but we don't know because we're stepping into an entirely new reality that 
no one has ever seen before. I'm telling you, this world is about to become so magical. One day you guys are going to be like, that crazy lady said it. You're, I'm telling you, this because the energy is the energy is becoming something so unlike anything we've experienced in thousands of years. It's like it's thousands of years. So we have to let go of everything that we have known. Everything. Yesterday I was in my meditation and Spirit said to me, do you realize that a, cata a caterpillar has no idea what a butterfly is? Can you? And I just, like, I had to come out of meditation. I was like, can you believe that a caterpillar has no idea what a butterfly is? And yet it has to become it. I mean, that is just, that is mind blowing to me. It doesn't even, so all it's doing is following the urges. All it's doing is following the urges, but it doesn't know what it's becoming. It hasn't ever talked to another butterfly to say, you know, here's what's going to happen. And you're going to, none of that because the metamorphosis of that experience doesn't even allow the frequency that a butterfly is for a caterpillar to access. Do you understand? And that is what is happening now. What we are becoming, we can't even act. We don't even know it. So you got to just trust. You got to do your work to clear out your consciousness and you love yourself and you know, be around other people who are on the path who can say, here's what's happening to me because there is a more metamorphosis happening that is going to be so extraordinary. I think I can, all I can do is tell you the astrology. I've never, I've not been there, so I can't even tell you, but I'm a, I, maybe I'm a little bit ahead to, because I read the astrology. So I can tell you that I'm beginning to now experience in real time what is going on in my mind and I can make the connections. I can see clearly how I am creating my reality. We're always creating our realities. We have always been creating our reality, but we have not been able to see it because we have disassociated from our gifts and our abilities and our powers that allow us to really understand how this system is a projection. And the reason we disassociated from it because of the system that we have been in that was based in white supremacy. So that is an, a lie of an illusion and that is coming down. So the real world is erecting, but it has to come through us. <laughs> All right, y'all. And it comes through our perception, which is Mercury, and it comes through our sensory body, which is Venus. And Venus is at the zero degree of Capricorn. And the Venus in Capricorn and Capricorn is all about external authority, right? So where have you cut your self off and, you know, where you don't listen to your feelings and, you know, when you do stuff when you don't want to do it, right? It's like, ah, it's Monday. I got to fucking go to work and you don't want to go to work, right? That's the way you have been oppressing yourself or denying yourself. You like doing things for money that you don't really want to do. I mean, one of the things that has been so significant for me in my relationship with money, having a mother who was a prostitute. Oh my gosh. I cannot stand to need money from men. I cannot, like it literally is a fucking against my religion. And I have been in relationships with men who had money and I just have been like, I can't do it. I can't do it because there is something for some people, not all, for some men who have money, their ego is so involved in it and they so identify with it that everyone has to submit to this idea or what they're, because they have the money. And I just have watched women do that, like lose themselves because he's paying the bills or he has the ticket that'll get, and I just, like I can, I would rather fucking be like, I'm gonna sit at home than be with a motherfucker who uses his money like he has a fucking big dick. And so, you know, it's like, where have we, where have we submitted 
Where have we oppressed ourselves with money and financial stuff because we think we really need it? Or, we, you know, we, where have we done things? Where have we prostituted ourselves? How about that? Where have we prostituted ourselves? And we have fucking all done it <laughs> somewhere because the culture demands it. The culture says you have to go do this job even though you hate all those motherfuckers and you don't even like what you're doing, but you're making this much money and it covers your house and it covers these bills and it covers, so you have to do it. Prostituting yourself. That is what it is. So um, this energy is really intense. The Scorpio energy, Scorpio is, you know, oh gosh. Scorpio is revealing the things that we've not been willing to see. So it's important for us to do, be willing now to do the hard work. We can do hard work. I love those sayings. We can do hard things. Yes, let me tell you, I've been doing hard things my motherfucking entire life. And it, most black people have, right? So going to a job that you hate for money that just sustains you, you know, compromising your soul's purpose and your humanity for money, that's hard, that's hard. This is not hard, this is fun. This is fun, right? So we want to begin to identify the ways that we've been compromising ourselves in relationships too, right? Like, you know, I, I see people who are in long-term relationships because of money, because I don't, you know, what will happen if their resources go away? You know, it's, and here's the thing about being a woman and compromising for the physical world reality. In your feminine power, you have command over the unseen world. When you learn to trust yourself, your intuition, develop your gifts, do the rituals, develop your magic, everything will magnetize to you so effortlessly. Just like I said yesterday, I literally watch the world come out of my mind because everything comes when you live in the magical place. That's the gift of womanhood. Y'all go tell Kevin Samuels that, <laughs> that the gift of womanhood is magic and the keys to the unseen world that men don't have. They don't. They have the keys to the seen world. And nothing runs here well without the keys to the unseen world. So as a woman, if you are getting with a man because he has money or you need him to pay your bills, you are dumbing yourself down so horribly because you are not, you're telling the universe, uh, I don't want the magic. Uh, I don't want to experience the miracles. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to rely on this man and his ability to work and make money. Huh? That's boring. <laughs> I mean, that's just, it's so, it's not even fun. It's, you know, it's, it's because it's not your power. It's his power, really. And it, it, it is your power because you have created him, but it's so, it's so beautiful to experience the mystery of the, of what we can't see here that is really here. That there's so much here that we cannot see. And when we, as women, come into the understanding that we are the cultivators of the unseen reality, that not only can we bring human beings, not only can we grow people in our bodies, not only can you grow a motherfucker in your body, okay? You can grow an idea. You can bring things out of the unseen mystical world and manifest and now more than ever because of the new astrological energy now more than ever your powers as feminine beings are becoming more realized but you have got to do the work to cultivate it and you cannot use crutches 
If you use crutches, you won't ever develop yourself. You've got to step out. You got to jump off the, you got to burn the motherfucking boats, right? You got to, like literally when I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to start manifesting money. I'm going to start. I had the people who would come and be like, here's $200 or loan me money. And I literally had to stop asking. I had to stop. You cannot loan me any money. You cannot no more, no more. I had to stop talking about my money. I had to literally shut the fuck up and cut it off so that that energy would then need to go function somewhere else. So I had to stop that behavior and then build a new, okay, so now I'm going to start doing readings. Now I'm going to study and I had to study and learn so that the energy said, okay, well, we'll go here. And then I started getting clients. I turned off that other flow and turned into a new turned into a new flow, right? So it's really important that you understand how you are doing your energy. You are the you are the guider of you are the driver of the energy. Okay, I've been talking a long time. I love y'all very much. Thank you in advance for your donations. Thank you for sharing how the work works. Thank you for booking readings. Thank you for sending me things like um, somebody sent me this beautiful Virgo thing. I love it so much. Thank you. Devin sent me that. Um, so thank you. Thank you for the exchange. Thank you for the reciprocity is what I'm trying to say. It really does matter and i'm looking at ways that i can now grow my business in new ways that allows me to be available but how can i get off of these how do i get off of facebook how do i like how do i do these things and i'm not sure yet so um make sure you guys sign up for my email list because my email list will be the place where i have access to everyone and you can do that on my um link tree all right. Peace and blessings. I love y'all. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye. I love you too, Miss Erin. <laughs> Bye-bye.